Hello and welcome to Shooting Outdoors channel, proudly supported by FMJ Gunshop Dunchurch. We did want to do a really nice glossy video for the long term review of the HW110. We really wanted to do it but unfortunately the weather's had different ideas and we've been literally scampering in and out, washed out all day. Yeah, scampering in and out between torrential downpours. So. It's getting to the end of the day and we we need to get this done really it's it's been lingering oh, yeah. you all want to know what's what's been going on with it so i really do apologize that we can't jazz it all up and do all the things that we did in the first review that we wanted to carry forward but the weather's just not going to allow it today yeah so this this part of the review is quite simply the the bit that you want to know and i'm just going to hand straight over to tom and say tom we left this saying it was a good value package you went away, you started playing with it, you've had it nearly a year now, or it's getting on for a year. Yeah. Be honest, how often have you shot it? Um, honestly, honestly, probably been out on, in terms of days out, a handful, 10, 11 times perhaps. How's it performed? It, it was bad. So it was bad. You could get it all zeroed in, lovely. It was great. It holds a phenomenal accuracy, I've no doubts about that. As soon as you try to move yourself anywhere, it's game over. It was all over the shop again and you had to do, do back to square one, which painfully was a lot like the Webley. Um, and hopefully you've all seen the pain that we went through with that. So there's, there was two things that was happening there really, wasn't there? There was one was a scope issue, which yeah. has got nothing to do with the, the 110. Yeah. Okay, so what was happening was when he adjusted his range and the parallax on his scope, the parallax shifted. Now we're going to do a piece on that and spin yeah. off, so I'm not going to dwell too much on it. So that was the scope issue. Yeah, so but there was another issue that was directly yeah. related to the rifle. And it's a common issue that's been probably widely, widely spoken about, and it's the not quite fully machined threads on the barrels. And what was happening was the moderator wasn't tightening up properly and with slight knocks and just general movement that you know shouldn't affect it at all it was just throwing it off slightly. Now the moderator, well the, the threads on the actual barrel it wasn't on that end that was the problem it was actually the threads inside the moderator that was supplied with it when Virac had made the initial machining on this piece here so what screws into the moderator to screw it onto the adapter ultimately part of the moderator that had been oversized in the drilling which had made instead of having like a sharp V on the moderator internal threads you basically had a platform like that so it was it was flopping around now it didn't take me long to work that out but what was that actually happening is Tom would put it into his bag he'd take it out he'd zero it he'd put it back in his bag come back a few days later to go out for a hunt be way off the pace shoot a target find that all of a sudden the zero shifted yeah. or it would be scattering like a shotgun or the next time he took it back out it would be bang on where it was before and that's when I sort of stepped in really and said well I need to have a look at this rifle because there's something not quite right with it and within a matter of minutes I found out that there was a problem with with the moderator threads now that's not a problem with the rifle so to speak no. is it that's that's a problem with one of the pits that comes with it it's yeah. a bit like almost if you had a dodgy magazine you know, you can't really blame the mechanics of the rifle yeah. for that. The other thing that we've noticed with this rifle, and I don't know if, if you've come across it, is the actual filling adapter itself. When Tom fills it up, if he pushes that in too far, it leaks out the other side, which we've seen on yeah. several occasions. But we've, we've, you've learned to sort of work around that, haven't you? Yeah. It's just part of getting used to your rifles first. You're pretty brutal when it comes to looking after rifles, rather than yeah. me who look after them. Tom literally will just hoy that thing in the back of the it's, car and drive it under a mile an hour it's a bit with a it banging around in the back. It is in a padded back, but he is quite tough. And I mean, there are, you know, you, you picked up, well, we'll pick up on there. There are some scuffs and scratches on, yeah. on it, but it's, if that was a wooden stock, it would look an absolute mess by now. So yeah. that. It's, it's, it's a it, tough old. It's, it, yeah, it's taken some abuse, like, and I mean, it's it's a really durable stock. Actually, you think you think it being soft, it would give and it would tear, or you'd pull chunks out of it, but it's really durable and it provides a load of grip. Had to adjust the trigger. Oh, the trigger! No, no, I haven't touched the trigger yet. I think it's uh, I think it's beautiful. I'm really happy with the trigger. Actually, it's got a nice, just proper smooth action. 
really honestly can't fault that trigger at all. Having your uh, your pressure gauge on the end there, it's a bit of a. It's know. not. It's not like you have to stick your eye down that barrel to look at no, it. It's don't. not. In, I mean, it's not in a desirable place, but. You know, I'm looking at it there, I can read exactly yeah. what that From is. From 45 it. degrees, you can quite happily read it. 150 bar, and my head is, my eyes are nowhere near that barrel. Yeah. If you're out in the field and all of a sudden you want to check, it, it's a pain to have to bring it all the way back to have a look. Yeah. But, I mean, you should be prepared and you should know what's, what's in your cylinder before you get to that point anyway. And we've we've got some camo tape on it just we to. Have, just to yeah, these are working rifles that we we review. Ultimately, we're going to be changing that because we're running out of space really for yeah. on our own collection. But yeah, just to give it a little bit extra for wear and tear. But that's not because it's you know yeah. the bluing's all still in good condition. Absolutely, yeah. It's nice. It's light. It's easy to move around in the it woods with. It's it's around. a great size. It's uh, yeah. It's, it's a hardy little today. rifle. It's it's been really performing really well. But it wasn't only the uh, thread issue that I had a problem with. We did some power tests, and just out using it, was, you know, the, it was quite a big drop in comparison to Glenn's um, S410. So what he means by that is the, the, the drop off, the trajectory was a massive loop in trajectory, yeah. oh. which is when we run it back through the, the chrono. Now, one eagle-eyed viewer did actually point this out, and he pointed out that it was under power, judging off the mathematics that we'd used in the previous video, which. I ran straight outside with the rifle, put it back through the chrono, you know, fully charged it up, which is what we've done previously, so reset the whole test and got exactly the same results. Mine was in power, but when you added up the averages, it had dropped well below the power. So it was we were getting a lot of noise, a lot of erratic noise when we made the mean of it. The low power was actually hidden within that noise. It wasn't until we let it down to about 170 foot pound a bar, sorry, that's when we realised that it was a little bit of a problem. And that's when you took it back to, to Solware. So the foot pound issue, let's get back to that because there's there's something else that, that I know three people who have uh, a 110. Tom's got one, uh, we'll just call them Bob and Tony. So Bob, his rifle was underpowered, Tony's wasn't underpowered, Tom's was. Both Bob and Tony's rifles were incredibly loud when you fired them, so when you fired the trigger and the action, sort of the hammer striking the valve, you would get a really pronounced crack. Almost like the, I have checked this rifle, it is, it is secure, I'm still going to fire it down range. But this noise here, that's almost the noise you got when you fired it, as loud as that and pronounced as that. That's the safety up. So, that's something to look out for. If your rifle is quite loud when you fire, if it sounds like you're pressing the safety, that kind of territory, chances are you've got an underpowered one. That's something I'll stick by and, and say. Once they're at the correct power rating, and Tom's got the certificate here from the manufacturer, well, the, the, the RFD, the RFD also got one off uh, Hull Cartridge themselves yeah. to confirm that the work had been carried out and sorted out. They're quiet, they're really, really quiet. Compared to my S410, it is really, really quiet. It, I, I'm actually really impressed by how quiet they've got that. Yeah. Considering it's plastic, you'd expect it to echo around a bit more. So yeah, so Tom took it back nearly eight months after he bought it, found out it was low power. At this point, you're kind of jumping around for the, if you're on the Air Arms band like me, thinking, whoa, yeah, they've made a rip. But I'll tell you what, what I want to know is, that rifle's under power, what are you going to do about it, Hull Cartridge? And they took it away, two weeks later, you got the phone call, it's back, we've tested it, yep, it's, it's back up to, what, 11 and a half foot pound average? Yeah. So it's, it's bang on the range with Air Arms, near Blow Fields. You know, the, the rest of it is, is really over to Tom on yeah. how he's got on with it, yeah. how you find it weight wise, moving it around. We've had it on the HFT course today. Yeah, it's, it's been really Talk us through that. Actually, um, yeah, completely different to what I'm used to, which is just bench shooting or off uh, off bags. It's performed super well today. Um, I mean, one of the things that sort of really impressed me is the the feel of the stock. It is just grip, grip, grip. And even in the wet, it's been thrown at some down today, and it's been ideal. No slip, you know, you've got no risk of dropping this. So yeah, super happy. It's really 
comfortable to hold, super well balanced. What I quite like actually as well, where the safety, very loud safety, locks down, you've got a nice sort of pinch grip there almost, which works really well. It balances just nicely there. So yeah, using it out on HFT has been, you know, completely different and I quite like Glenn to take it out and see how he gets on at some stage. One thing I am sort of still getting a little bit used to, I suppose, is the action. It's very smooth, there's no doubt in that. It's nice. Just that initial push back, it's quite a big, quite a bit of effort you have to apply before it sits back in. What's the effect of that? Is your finger it's, slipping off it? No, you it's, kind it's, of having a it's you, you're more inclined to take it away from your shoulder to do it. So while it's still in your shoulder, doing it, you're, you're pushing the rifle away from your shoulder and you have to reset your eye again, which isn't ideal. Yeah, so what you're saying is if you were to, to go out there and shoot super tight 10 shot groups or 35 shot groups, you, your chances of you moving it, the rifle in your head, because ultimately you want to keep that three point of contact there. Your Tom, what Tom's saying is it's, it's moving away from him when he's when he's doing that. The guns are in the way. Whereas on a bolt action, you pull it into yourself. That's it. You're pretty much done. You're just pushing it home then. Whereas that is it works smoothly the other way, yeah. but it's, it's stiff the other way, which yeah, is a bit exactly. of a negative. Yeah. So the, the other bit as well in terms of hunting is the safety. I mean, you be able to hear that clear as day from where you are. I mean, you can try and do it quietly, and you can, but it becomes a bit fiddly and you, you're away from the trigger at that point. So coming from, from a, a Raider background where you had no safety <laughs> catch, do you find that you use that safety? No, no. So, And that's yeah. because it's either a use not using it or because it is a bit of a clout on. Yeah, well I think it's a combination of the two really. Once I fired a shot, that's pretty much it and if it's, I suppose the only time I'm really using it is when I'm getting into position that's only when I'm sort of skulking around perhaps and then get set down somewhere but again you've got that ability to put a finger over the other side of it and slow it down and completely take, take the knocking out of it. Knock it so the other thing that we're finding with this is the type of pellet that Tom uses is shot an extremely flat trajectory mm. he's zeroed it not a kick in the backside of where I zero my air arms my S410 and using you use Falcons, don't you? In that, yeah, Falcon accuracy. And he's finding the Falcons are shooting really, really well out of it. But his trajectory is flat. He gets to about 15 yards, and then he's literally just within five millimeters of a, a line either side. His, his kill zone's about half an inch, and then that is carrying right out to what about 40 yards before you have to then start compensating. Yeah, start so he's he's got a really really good usable range and. <clears throat> It then it stops having to have that floating range thing going on that, that I tend to use and shout about. It does take a lot of the process out of it. No doubt I could probably do the same with the arms if I use Falcons, but I'd prefer a heavier bit of lead. And it's because they shoot tighter groups, and that's what ultimately what you've gone off as well. Yeah. And yeah, I stand by what I said originally, it is a great package, the fact that you get two magazines, it's great, and the fact that it comes with a moderator as well, saves you another 50 quid to go and buy another one for the power yeah. externally. Yeah. When you start taking them prices off, then you start to look at things like Brocock and Battles, you start to look at, like I said, the air arms, which I think has been pretty much a stalwart in that, that, that category. I know we yeah. keep putting these two, my rifle against his and all the rest of it, but you've got to look at, at the facts, and, and like we've, we've put out in the previous video the air arms was pretty much the one that everybody tends to pick yeah, yeah. you always see them at air rifle ranges you know these these things tend, well I don't know I don't see that many of them now I know one or two but that's about it of, of the S410 I know more people have got these now than, than have got S410s yeah. and I'll be honest with you I would be quite happy to pay 650 for that now there have been some comments I mean we, we, we love a little debate on the channel that the prices are going to come down somewhat and the quality may slip. But that's, that still remains to be seen from this point in time of year on. Prices have started, I've seen, to climb a little bit by about 25, 20, 25 pounds on some websites, not all of them. Uh, certainly where this was purchased from has, has crept up a little bit when I looked the other day. 
been because I knew we were going to be doing this review and I, I wanted some dirt on it. <laughs> but that just says that it's a popular rifle and you know, whole cartridge are well within the rights to, to thing him. And there was a bit of a waiting time for the 177s, but they're, they're back on top of it now. Now that same viewer also commented that the internals for repairs of so seals and hammers, weights, all this kind of jazz, if you break an internal part, apparently they're not going to be for general release, so they're not going to be able to go out and just buy them off the internet. If they do, they won't be genuine whole cartridge parts. Now, whether they do that to, well, whether they're doing that to a monopolise the market or b maintain quality levels, is is a bit unclear. I think if you're a little bit, you know, pessimistic, you'll you'll go down there. Oh, they just want to monopolise it so the gunsmiths don't get a look in. But then again, there are a lot of bad gunsmiths out there that will just put in whatever they can find. Exactly. Pull cartridge on them parts and hold on to them, so you've got to send it back. You may pay a little bit of a premium for it, but you know you're getting a decent part. Yeah. And that's. At the end of the day, you've got to give that gun. Just, it's, it's nice to throw the cheap stuff in there, but, but as always, buy it cheap, buy it twice. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're paying £650 for the rifle, you're going to probably need to get it repaired if you need to. So, hopefully, there's many more years of uh, use out there. The HW 110 for you, isn't it? And I think and off what I've seen with Tom today shooting it, I think you're going to be very competitive with that rifle. Yeah, I've, I've got a long way to get fully set. I'm not fully settled in with this rifle at all by a long way, but I think by the end of this year I'll be a lot more comfortable trying to get out a bit more. And um, yeah, HFT's completely changed my perspective on shooting, so you're doing a lot more of that in the near future as well. Yeah, it's a good benefit. It's good to have a, a rifle that you can work with long term. So a couple of little hop-ups that I've seen for this rifle on the internet, a couple of the other lads have bought them as well. They do a sling swivel, sling, yeah, a sling swivel kit for it, and that just replaces the forward grub screw here, uh, or Allen bolt screw, and they have a piece which comes in between the stock, so you've got to, plate, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to find your little holes to get in with, take this uh, shoulder pad out. Yeah, that's at the butt pad and you've got a little sandwich plate that goes in there with a sling swivel that's probably well worth purchasing yeah. it might be a premium to be honest, but it saves you drilling a stock yeah, that absolutely. is what a major thing is for me now the other thing that you've got on this and I don't know if any HFTers have got you've got another bolt there that's already tapped with the same thread hamster hamster on that for HFT and I think you've got something that is if anybody who had a BSA Ultra I think it'll be switching out to one of them very very soon once they start doing them kind of parts for them I yeah, it, but it's certainly because it's detachable so quickly, you don't have to take the stock off or anything. Just take one of the bolts out, fit it back in, bipod, bolt out, straight in. Just take the bolt out if you don't like the swing swivels. There's, it, it's actually going to be quite a versatile little rifle. Yeah. No drilling of stocks is, is a major bonus for me because it's the one thing you don't want to do. It's, yeah, it's stick a hole in, it, inside it. Was, it. On the Webley, it was pretty nerve wracking just to get and it centered, was, let alone. That was a very old it. rifle that the stock had had a lot of work done to it anyway yeah, yeah. it just yeah and i'm doing it on my air arms and on the rotex you know I, I don't really like doing it but it's kind of a necessity if you hunt because yeah. you need somewhere to hang it you can't carry it like your arms just get tired fatigue kicks in so yeah. but overall very balanced rifle i'm actually keen to pick your brains on that which is yeah he's got a point there actually that is really well balanced and this is something that you'll pick up with, with, with any rifle, actually, yeah. Alright then, fair enough. So, yeah, yeah, you're just getting along really, really well with it. Yeah, it's been a, an interesting story so far, with negative start, but it has been a massive turnaround. I'm proper happy with it. Yeah. Uh, Strength-wise, things like this bolt and all that, that, that that's not been a problem. I mean, you're not going to arrive on it and I mean, snap like, it off, like are you? Like you said the first time, it is it is polymer, people are going to knock it till the cows come home, but like you said in the first video, uh, the short-term review, if you abuse that, it's going to snap. If you abuse an alloy one, it's going to snap. You just treat your rifle with care, and so far I have been, and it hasn't let me down. So. We were concerned that you could double load it. Because Tom appeared to double load it. Now, when I had the rifle, when I was looking at it for Tom, I tried to double load it. You can't double load it. 
<laughs> it doesn't even index it, yeah. it just locks it. It just yeah. literally, the magazine, the catch won't work, it will not spin that magazine so at you all. Can, you so, can see it there. It's yeah. not moving anywhere. So it does not double load. That's that question solved. Yeah. Now, we didn't mention that in the first video that we thought that might happen, uh, mainly because we didn't want to test it, we, we hadn't trialed it to make sure it couldn't, but that, that doesn't happen. Strength wise, like you said, Tom said, is everything is there for it. Yeah. The stock's nice and tough and hardy. It's at a great price. Six, if you can get one of them for 650, I think you've got yeah, a do. very, very good rifle. And that's coming from somebody who's, who's air arms mad. But S410 mad. I'm not, I just think that's a good rifle. Um, you know, I've got one. I, I love my little S410. I'll say little, it's huge. So that pretty much sums up the HW110 from us from a long term point. We really won't be doing much more on this rifle unless he decides to start getting it modified or little bits come on the market for it which it would be nice to see because for such a versatile rifle I'd expect to see a lot more versatile bits on it and hey if they don't maybe that's something that we're going to end up doing. We know what we can, We could. I think I could take that rifle to all new levels for, in fact you know what no this is going to happen I'm going to start taking some dimensions and I'm going to start getting that ready for HFT competitions so that he can shoot it and be more competitive. There we go. Big statement. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> that's, that's going to happen. That's, that's, that's going to happen. And if you like it, all the bits that you see on it, I'll, I'll, I'll make them available. On that bombshell, <laughs> as Clarkson would say, as always, feel free to comment, don't troll. We love the interaction, we love to be able to interact with you. It's we want to do more of it. Always, absolutely. There's always two band camps of the Virot. Those who love it, those who loathe it. I sit on the fence with everything. If it shoots right, it fits me right, and I get on with it, I love it. They're my final thoughts on it. As always, stay safe, shoot straight, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, goodbye. So I've been filming the uh, the long term review on the HW110 today and we've been just been discussing a few points on the way back and it was, <laughs> it was getting a little bit out of hand so we put the camera on to maintain discipline <laughs> so we're just gonna we're just gonna carry on this little debate so Tom so where do you leave off mate? Well I'm absolutely blown away with how the 110's behaving it is a mega bit of kit and it's trajectory is just super flat with the uh, Falcon Accuracy Plus and I think, well, that is beneficial in HFT, which is something that something I want to improve. I haven't really got that much experience in it. So, um, how, how, how do you think that would get on then? So you've got a flat trajectory out to what? So we, we've done the map, and between sort of 15 and, I would say 15 and 35 yards, you're completely flat. Yeah. Then you get a mil dot drop off at, half a mil dot drop at 10 yards, and then at 40 yards, yeah. you're still, at half a mil dot, yeah. 45, you're at a full mil dot. So you're, you're really, really flat. So you think that's going to have an advantage to you? Massive advantage. Massive advantage. Your range finding yeah, goes, it becomes a breeze almost because you've got such little to account for at that point. It's, well, I don't know, in, in two, it work in two ways, couldn't it? Because you've got very little to sort of measure and reference off because it, the change is so slight, but do you really have to make any adjustments? I think it's so minimal that you don't personally. I think with the trajectory you've got, I don't think you will do, but I don't think... You, you've still got to weigh that rifle and still, still sort of point it, but... So what you're saying is it's taking out a lot of the thought processes ultimately, Absolutely. aren't it? So, you, you think taking on the air arms, or any HFT rifle for that matter, I, is gonna, your, your 110 I, is going to absolutely well, lick them into the ground. <laughs> I've had enough of your S410 and the, the big show off you've been going on with it, so I, I want to try and knock it down a few pegs, that's what I'm trying to say. So, well, I'm, well, I'm no, 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 because what yours seems to be saying is, I want a shot at the title. You think you're Joshua and you think I'm Klitschko. <laughs> Not, uh, Put your money where your mouth is then. Lose a, buy, lose a place for the feet. Um, so, yeah. it's, yeah. Five, it's, it's five or two's the range for the day. Yeah. Right, okay then. 
so that that's going to be part of the long term review then we're going to add that in at the yeah. end as a bonus yeah. or are we going to do that as something separate I think just throw it in at the end throw it in at the end just like as like the credit, so, credits sort of thing so you're going to put the German Messerschmitt out against the Spitfire yeah you think your super technology is a match for British innovation and finesse absolutely the cavemen were using the S410 <laughs> welcome to the 20th century mate 21st century actually, shit, I need to get that around. Right, so, so we're going to have a battle of Britain then. Yeah. We're going to have a battle of Britain yeah. in the woods, we're going to make the 110 review an epic. We'll have the plucky feature length. <laughs> Although, so no, you're not, what you're saying is this isn't the battle of Britain, this is a siege of Malta. <laughs> well it is, isn't it? You've got a dated Gloucester Gladiators going up against the might of the German Air Force, the ME 109. Yeah. And I've got this clapped out knackered old aeroplane. So my clapped out knackered old airplane. Remember what happened in the Siege of Malta? Them little gladiators, they held them off. Yeah, yeah. Faith, hope and glory. Yeah, but again, that was a long time ago. Right. It's all, it's all different now. Okay, right, so set a date. Three weeks from today. Yeah. We're going to come back yeah. and we're going to film it. Rain, hail, snow, sunshine, which usually happens all at once when we film. Yeah, right, exactly. And then we're going to whack this on the back and make it an absolute feature length. Yeah, we'll do it in good. two parts then because we'll need to add this in otherwise people will just wonder what on earth we're doing. Exactly. So, right, so we do the 110 review and then we start it with this. Right, yeah. okay, you've heard that first, this is going to happen. It's so, on. you better get practicing. I want a good run at this. Yeah. You know, I don't want this to be my little Gloucester Gladiators kicking in your super, super duper technology. Right, as always, feel free to comment, don't troll, it's stay on. safe, shoot straight and it's on, <laughs> game on for the Battle of Britain, yeah. or the Siege of Molotov as I'm going to call it. <laughs>